Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Grace and peace to you all. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, all glory to the Most High Yahweh. All praises to Him. Thank you for giving us another day to serve Him and to give Him glory and to give Him honor with our lives. Staying in the scripture, staying in His Word, allowing His Word to use us and guide us in all truth. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Ray here, on the behalf of Fit to Fight for Christ Ministries, Men of Majesty Ministries, I pray that you guys are having a blessed day today, um, each and every day. I just want to drop on here real quick. I'm just going over my uh, Bible study or my part of my one of many little studies that I do. Uh, this is from the scriptures from Matthew 5 and 6. And it says, Blessed are those who seek righteousness seek after a hunger and thirst for righteousness for they should be for they shall be filled right they should be satisfied the only thing in this world that can satisfy your thirst and hunger for truth is the word of god is the word of yah his word is truth in all aspects of our lives there is nothing, there is no man wisdom, there is no philosophy, there is no science, there is no uh, other intellectual book or any earthly knowledge that can supersede the knowledge and the wisdom and the divine power of the Holy Scriptures. Those who seek that kind of righteousness are seeking after the Most High. They are going after His heart. When you're filled with his spirit by being born again through him, being watched and filled with his word, you can live out your life how he wants you to live out your life, how Christ lived his life, right? It's not easy. It's very hard, but it can be done if you if you surrender, humble yourself, become you know born again through him, sanctified every day. We have to seek to live according to the most high. It's not just a one time thing. It's an everyday thing. And I want to reiterate this to you. When we live according to the ways of Christ, our lifestyle has to be changed. But there must be fruit that comes from our life, from living a life of servitude. You know, we have to deny ourselves, our wants, our goals, our things in this world. You know, you know, just like with me in the world championships, you know, I would love to go to the world championships. It would be nice to go to the world championships, but is it what God wants me to do at this moment? You know, you know, if he, if it was so, then I would be able to go. But I'm okay with that because God wants me to take care of my responsibilities. He wants me to take care of my household. He wants me to take care of my wife. He wants me to be with my family. You know, wherever God places me, I'm ready to serve him and I'm going to serve him to the, to the max level of my capacity with the life that's in me, that he gave me. You know, it would be great to go to the world, but you know what? It's okay. They're going to be all right. It's going to be a beautiful event. They're going to have a wonderful time. And I'm praying for everyone to be successful there. But besides that, I've already moved on for that. But on other things, like I said, those who seek after righteousness of the Most High through his scriptures, through his word, then you can know what the, the true meaning of what life is, your true purpose on why the Most High created you? Why are you here in this earth? What is your design and purpose? Why am I going through all of these different things in this world? Why do I, why is there suffering? Why is there pain? Why is there death? Why do we have to go through these hurricanes? Why is this? Why is that? All the answers are in the scriptures. You know, because of we live in a broken, fallen world, you know, through sin, the curse of sin, we chose that option. But, the, but he gave us a way out and he gave us a way to overcome the world through Jesus Christ, Yahusha. So those who are born again of the Spirit through Him, those who are reconciled, like He reconciled the whole world, but it's up to you to go ahead and deny yourself, turn away from your way of thinking, 
your mind starts, like I said, it starts in your mind, the wars in your mind. Once you repent in your mind and your heart deeply, being remorseful, having a, 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 a godly sorrow, turning away from your old mindset and living according to what Christ says, being born again through Christ, through his word, doing being filled with his word every but you got to be filled every single day you can't just say oh one time I'm, I'm i'm saved yeah you're saved but that's not the end you still have to endure christ commands us to endure to the end keep his commandments in our hearts never forget them don't dismiss them you know the way to live according to christ is through his commands that's how you are able to obey him. That's how you're able to live him. That's how we are able to live a disciplined life is by staying in his commands. Apart from his commands, we can do nothing. We just said all we're doing is lip service. We're talking, but we're not doing. We're not actively living. We're not actively seeking. You know, if we want to be filled and satisfied with righteousness, then we have to seek him in every way, every day. No matter what kind of day you're going through, no matter what situation you may face, no matter how bad life may seem, we constantly must trust in the Most High because he's the only one in this world that can give us complete peace, complete joy, complete satisfaction. Right? You got a lot of people out here that, that come at you the devil always trying to attack you in many, many different ways. Through social media, through people in the streets, through the cars, the way that people are driving. Everywhere you go, you have to continue to keep that light. You got to continue to walk in righteousness, walk in truth, continue to be set apart. Regardless of what other people do, regardless of how they act, how they treat you. We, if you're a believer in Christ and you want to show the example of Christ to a person, anybody that's around you, you want to win people to Christ, you have to make sure you display his character, his, his, his motives, his heart. You have to seek him and know, study him, study Jesus, study his word, pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to continue to fill you, to continue to work on your heart, to soften your heart daily to give you wisdom to understand and have more discernment every single day. We have to do that. If we want to win this war, if we want to be filled with righteousness, if we want to be blessed, then we constantly, we, we must actively seek the most high every single day through his word. The way you know the most high is through the Bible, through the scriptures. You have to study the scriptures da daily in order to stay on this track. But you also must apply what you've learned through the scriptures because knowledge without applying is, is, is no good. It's just like having a loaded gun or military weapon and you can't use it because you're not applying it. You study the word, you understand it, you comprehend it, you ask the most high for God to do his spirit to continue to work on your mind because it all starts in your mind. It starts in your mind and it works through your actions. And that's how you display the truth of the gospel by applying it to your life. And then you'll start to see in your life how it's reflected with others. When you interact with people, your mindset will begin to change. You will no longer have that, that perception. Your rationale will change. Your reason will change. You, you won't have the same thoughts because before we come to Christ, we are consumed by everything else around us, by this world. All the deceptions, all the lies, all the, the, the false truths, the half-truths, right? All the deceptions, all the, the pleasure, all the self-gratification, all the desires of the flesh, which are contrary to the, to the word of God, to the contrary to Christ. We want, 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 want. And then when you see it in the storm, you really see the heart. You didn't really see the full heart of man. The, the wickedness, but if we went into like a food famine, where we lost, where we were fighting for food, you would see all hell break loose. There would be people killing each other for food, because we live in a society that's prime for an antichrist. We are prime to receive the antichrist. The people, I'm not saying the believers in Christ, I'm saying the people that don't have Christ in their heart, that do not receive the love of Christ and are not actively living and seeking him. These are the people that's going to be deceived. These are the people that's going to take the mark of the beast. These are the people that's going to be led astray and deceived 
those who don't have Christ, those who are not actively seeking the most high in their heart and and and, and asking for him to continue to be filled and, and studying and, 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 and really digging deep, seeking him with their whole heart, mind and soul, loving him with their whole mind, soul and strength, you know, loving their neighbor, people that are not actively doing that, people that deny Jesus Christ as Lord. That's the people that's going to be deceived and fall for the mark of the beast. A lot of people are wishing for chaos. You don't want chaos. You don't want that kind of chaos. You don't want when all hell breaks loose and you have no nothing to cover you. You don't want that. The Holy Spirit is not here to cover us and pray because the Holy Spirit is covering us and protecting us now. But when it's when it's when everything is when he let when everything is the restraint is taken off, you're gonna you're gonna wish that you had a covering and a protection. You're gonna wish that you had that grace. Be humble. Be thankful. Repent. Turn to live for Jesus Christ. Believe in his gospel. He died for you. He died on the cross for you to be reconciled back to him. He was only one. You know, the most high was the only one to be able to do it. He couldn't. There was no one in heaven. There were no hosts in heaven. No one in heaven that could redeem him but his, but God himself. He's the only one that could forgive sins. He's the only one that can that can heal you. He can only one that can restore you. He's the only one that can transform you. He has authority over heaven and earth and all over. There is no one like him. He was a great I am. He is Yahusha Hamashiach, God Almighty in the flesh. And he's coming back for his people. He's coming back for a bride. He's waiting for us to come back. If you are in Israel, if you are believers in Christ, if you say you love Jesus, Yahusha, we got to start showing it and living it, seeking after him fully, seeking after righteousness. You want to live in righteousness. You want to be set apart. You don't want to be like this world. You don't want to blend in with the way this world is. You want to be separated. Led through the spirit, be led by the spirit, not by the flesh. Be born again. And I was going over a scripture with brother uh, Dwayne earlier, my, one of my brothers on the uh, Men of Majesty. He's in the UK. He's a great, uh, great brother. Very, very, very um, intelligent brother. But he, he deeply is rooted in the word and he has the Holy he's Spirit filled. I can, you know, he is he is spirit filled, definitely spirit filled in a strong uh, man of the word. And he and he's teaching me, he's teaching other brothers that we must completely rely on the word. And that's a, a lot of things we get. We were not taught in the United States in, you know, Bible school and things like that. And, and you know, they teach us that we study the word, but the way that the theology, what they teach is not, uh, you know, is not like, they, it's a lot of man-made interpretation. I'm not saying it's all bad or it's all the same, but there's a lot of man-made indoctrination that's blended into the scriptures to give people a perception of what a, a, a Christian is supposed to be or a man of God is supposed to be, which is not true. We are to go with the scriptures saying and, 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 and avoid any type of... Uh, trying to take what the scripture says and make it into something that is a tradition or a, a doctrine, which is not what the scripture represents. So we got to, you know, break down and we got to, you know, uh, how do they say it? Deconstruct in a good way, in a positive way. A lot of the bad teachings that we've learned and we got to go back to basics. We got to go back to basics, go back to the Bible scriptures and search the scriptures and thoroughly study the scriptures to make sure that we are uh, understanding and asking the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us to give us the the complete understanding of what the scriptures are, are supposed to mean for us and not base it off of just what people say or what a certain tradition says, because we know the scriptures are here for all our learning, understanding, profitable for teaching, rebuking, uh, approving and building up. <clears throat> and the scriptures are true. You know, some people, and like I said, the reason why we have a lot of people that are <clears throat> that are a lot of confusion and a lot of people are are are, are coming. Or a lot of people are mad at the scriptures for no reason because they know that they're wrong. We know that we're wrong. We know that we 
we don't line up, when our spirit is not lined up with what God wants, we're nowhere in error. But it makes it worse when you got people that's teaching the scriptures incorrectly to try to push people and pushing people away, you know, just pushing them away, not trying to, you know, lead them to truth and gentleness and trying to bring these people out of darkness, you know, and a lot of people are not going to receive most people. Majority of the people are not going to receive the word. But if you come with the gentleness and the love of Christ and you break them down and you show them the scriptures and, and explain it to them, a lot of people, the spirit of God will touch. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, if you're coming and living through the Holy Spirit, if you're if your spirit is lined up, if you have this Holy Spirit and you're actively uh being led by his spirit and not your spirit, not your human flesh, then you will win more souls than you will lose them. And even if you don't win the souls, if you don't win them over, you know, right away, you've already planted the seed for that person. If you come with that person in gentleness, you know, if love and you and you're, you're long suffering and you're enduring with them, you're constantly, I've, I've had many, many people that I've witnessed to and people in the gym, a lot of guys, hard, hard, hardcore guys, you know, a lot of dudes been jail, locked up, been in gangs. And I talk to these brothers and these brothers are hard nosed. They want you to be straight up with them because that's where that's where it got to be. That's how it is. You know, you're not going to come fake faking the funk with these dudes. You got to be who you are and, and be straight up with them. Let them know that you're weak. You weak, too. You're not you know, you're not better than them. But at the same time, you're standing on the word of truth and you're actively seeking. Say, look, brother, I don't think I'm better than nobody, man. I'm, I'm just like you, brother. I'm just I'm out here trying to serve the Lord. That's it. And I'm trying to help you, too, because I know this is the truth. I know Jesus Christ is the truth, the way to life. And the only way you could be free from the systems and the, and, the, and the division and the wickedness of this world and the schemes of the enemy is through his word and having been born of his spirit. Right. Like I said, I was talking to um, Elder Dwayne, and we were talking about uh, uh, John 3, 3 through 5, about being born in the flesh, and of the spirit being of the water and the spirit. And we were both, um, and I, I studied the scripture. A lot of people believe that when you read that scripture, that means that being baptized in the water <clears throat> Is like saying John 3 3, unless you were born of water and of spirit, meaning being born of water and then the Holy Spirit falls on you, then you're saved. That's not what it means by as far as baptism is concerned. What it's what it means in context is that it's a physical birth. When you're in your mother's womb, you you know, there's a lot of different water and stuff around in your in your physical birth, but also through the washing of the word. The washing of the word, the washing of the word is Christ, right? You go through Christ and then you're born again through his spirit. That is the new birth. You have the physical birth and then you have the spiritual birth. Every man that's born on this earth, the way to you, the way to get born again is through that pattern. You can't just appear out of nowhere and say that, you know, you could be born again. You have to come to the woman of the Because remember, everything is... Uh, Everything is applied to the order of how the creation is set up. You know, man came through woman, right? We all come through woman. We were born again. We're born through woman, right? Everybody has to come to the womb. And when we're born into sin, because there would be no need to be re renewed or be born again if we were already, if we're already clean, if we're already good, right? If we were sinless. And the only one that was sinless was Christ. You know, he was the only one that was sinless. He was the only one that was perfect. But all of us, even then, he still stayed in the will of the Most High. He still obeyed him to his commandments. He did what was commanded in the scriptures. He did what he was supposed to do, what he was called to do. He was a servant. And we must have that same mindset as Christ being servants. Although, you know, we're being born again through our mother. We're being born through our mother physically. We're being washed with the word being born again spiritually and then we're new we're a new creation then our whole mindset changed because when you come to the water when you come to your mother's womb you remember we're, we're born into sin so we have to curse the sin that's upon us all the wickedness all the evil all the the deceptions we're born with that nature we have that nature coming out of the womb 
right? And then we're born again through the spirit. Because remember, when we're born, we're born into this world. We take our minds when we're children until we grow up. We're processing all this stuff. And, not, and almost all of the stuff that we learn is not of God. Most of the stuff that we learn growing up as kids, all the things we see, all the little things that we do, our little attitudes, our our selfish desires. You know, you see a little baby sometimes, you know, they could be so cute, but the babies have selfish desires. It's because inside of us, even though we have, God has put inside of us a conscience to know right from wrong, we don't go with the right because we do what we want. Our nature, because of Adam and Eve's sin, is is a reflection of that on our lives, on how we are and how we interacting with, you know, when we're born out of the womb, when we're growing up, we have to learn how to do good. We have to learn, even though we have that, that uh, we have it inside of our conscience, we have to learn and develop that as we grow older and mature. We have to learn to live according to Christ and be imitators of Christ. We have to transform our minds. That's why we have to fill our mind with things of God, things of the kingdom, and not fill our minds with filth and junk and pollution, all the desires of the world, all the pleasures of the world, all the, the wicked things we see in the social media and news and all this other stuff that we pick up, all of our bad, disgusting uh, habits of, you know, just a bunch of stuff that doesn't that doesn't give us any uh, growth or to produce anything, any fruit of uh, righteousness to us, or any fruit of the Holy Spirit. But when we consume with different types of uh, wickedness and, and different types of things that we see all over the place, and we're constantly being filled with that things, that's what we become. That's what comes into our hearts. It's what you feel with. So the battle is in your is in your mind, and it works through your heart. So when you consume yourself with the word of God, when you're fellowshipping with believers, true believers that are actively seeking the most high, when you're praying and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you, when you're constant, when you're fasting and, and you're building yourself up, you know, not just your physical, but you're actually building up your spiritual, your spiritual will be, be the most dominant part of your mind. Like your, your, your focus on Christ, whatever you put your mind focus on will be the dominant uh, factor in your life. So when you're focusing on the Holy Spirit, when you're constantly focused on the scriptures and letting the word uh, work through you and help grow you and strengthen you, you will be more inclined to do for the to work for the kingdom and be more effective than a person that's not really uh, in the word, that's not studying the word, that's just kind of like halfway and still consuming themselves with a lot of different things that are not of God. It can it can it can um, like kind of stifle the Holy Spirit that it won't you won't be be work you won't be used to your maximum capacity as if you were working or as if you were living in in, in abiding in the scriptures and focusing on the, the kingdom things and not focusing on the things of this world. So, like I said, seek righteousness, seek um, living according to His scriptures. Seek to obey his commands. Seek to keep the word, the, the, the word of truth in your heart. Always remember you're an active servant. Always remember that you're actively, there's no break. There's no time off. You have to, no matter what's going on around you, no matter how bad life may seem, no matter how hard things may feel, no matter what you're going to, because you're going to have up and down days, it's going to happen. But one thing you do know is this, that you have the, if you're born again through Christ, you have the spirit in him. So you, through him inside you, so you can live and have joy, have peace, you know, and contentment in the midst of all your, your problems. So you can have joy because you know that you are being a good soldier, that you know, you're, 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 you know, you're being rewarded by Christ. You know, that if you're going to go through these things, you know, you have a prize awaiting for you at the end when we leave this earth. But not only then. You can still live and thrive and, and have contentment in the midst of all the struggles by other people who put their trust in the world, who put their trust in finances, who put their trust in the stock market and all the, the, the possessions that they have. When all of that stuff is gone, they have nothing. You look at all the stars, all the, the actresses and the music industry people and all that stuff. They have all the money, all the, 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 the uh, fashion, the cash and the and the pizzazz and all these things. They have all this stuff they can do, but they can't do anything righteous with that. 
and they have no fulfillment in their life because it's still empty. You know, you look at the thing with Puff Daddy, the, all these things, he's all this stuff that he, he had a lot of money. He could have did so much with that money. He could have he could have did so much donated to the community, help build up people. You know, he could have, you know, use it towards the kingdom. You know, if he if he would have if he, he could still repent. But if he if he if he did that and transform, he wouldn't be in this situation. But like I said, people make deals and, and contracts with these rec record labels and these people, these elites, this wickedness in high places. And they dominate their mind. And then what it is, is that these people, when they don't have the Holy Spirit in them, they have all these demons that surround them and all those demons that are infiltrating them. And they get into more and more dark and dark and more wicked and perverse, different abominable things. The more they get consumed with the world, the more they get, the more money they get like a like a little kid in a candy store. They don't know what to do with themselves because the nature of man in his heart is evil and is constantly seeking evil every single day. That's why you have to, brothers and sisters, you have to be filled with the word of God. You have to be filled with the scriptures. I'm going to tell you this every single time because that's the only thing that's going to carry you and give you endurance to overcome your sin, your flesh, to overcome the, the ways of this world, to overcome the deceptions and the lies, to overcome the wicked um, intellectual antichrist spirit that comes at you. You have to stay faithful to his word and stand on his word and do it in love, regardless of whatever attacks that come against you. Make sure you stay in the faith through his word being consent, constantly filled with his word, being led by the Holy Spirit and be guided by him at all times. Make sure you put on the whole armor in God and stay guarded up in truth and never give up. Continue to fight no matter how hard it is. Never give up. Keep fighting. Keep enduring. Keep being strong through Christ. Pray for your brothers. Love your brothers. Forgive your neighbors. Continue to make sure you have the spirit of Christ that's dwelling in you. Let it shine before all your brothers, before all people, and let them know who your God is so they can glorify him who is in heaven. So that's my word for today, guys. You know, I pray that this blesses you. Uh, I just want to pray right now. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, Eternal Father Abba, uh, Yahuwah, we thank you right now. We thank you for giving us strength. We thank you for giving us another day today, Abba. We thank you for um, for me being able to, to preach your word and to speak your word to the brothers and sisters here. I pray that this blesses them. I pray that it gives them encouragement and strength. I, I I pray that it puts a fire in these men that are on here, that they can walk away from the ways of this world and be born again. Repent and turn away and live according to your gospel. Be born again of your spirit and let the, their light shine before all men, glorifying you in heaven. The goal is to win souls. The goal is to live your life according to you, to be representatives of you here on earth, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yahusha, we want to do that every single day, not just for one day, not just for two days, but we want to have this in our lives constantly. We want to constantly be um, filled with your word. We want it to be sanctified daily. We want to be set apart for your ways and purpose, because that's what you called us to do, is to represent you here on earth and lead all men out of darkness. Not everybody's going to receive it, Lord. We understand that. But I pray for those that, that can receive this word, that they let meditate on it and, and, and allow that them to follow your scriptures and allow the scriptures to give them guidance and wisdom to the truth so they can live a life in, in service to glorify you and to be leaders and shepherds of their households and, and and wherever ministry they are, wherever they are, they could be used in their job, their workplace, and anywhere that they could be used to glorify you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. I give you all honor, glory, and praise. Protect us and guide us and give us strength. Give us endurance to overcome anything that comes our way. No matter what we have, wherever we live or die, we give our lives to you, Lord. We honor you with our lives. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yahusha, we give you all honor, glory, and praise in your most majestic name and beautiful name. Amen. So that's my prayer for you guys. That's my word for you guys. I pray that this blesses every single one of you guys. You guys stay strong. Never give up. Encourage one another. Love one another. 
whatever kind of day you're having, you're still alive. If you can see this message, you're alive. You know, Jesus has brought us, you know, the hurricane really, really, it really awakened something in me as well. You know, it kind of threw me off for the week, but it did awaken me to continue to just go harder for Christ and to um, reach out to more brothers, man, and, and just lead them, man, because the time is running short. Um, we don't know when the, the arrival time of Christ, but as we look at the days are getting more dark and we see that the days are, are becoming more, uh, everything is biblical, is is being reflected right now. If we look at the patterns of this world, look at the signs of the times and all the stuff, the rumors of wars and the pains and the, and the birth pains are rising, we can see that we are definitely in the last days and we need to cry aloud, you know, all the brothers, all the brothers in Christ that can hear this message. Anybody that's a man of God that believes Jesus Christ is Lord needs to, in their own arena, in their own way, you know, let people know about the gospel of Jesus Christ and be repent and turn from their ways and live according to his, his ways and statutes because it's a sad thing for a man or anyone in this world to die without Jesus Christ. So many people have died without Jesus Christ. So many overdosed. So many people were killed by gun violence and, and gang violence and, and all kinds of crazy stuff. You got people in the Middle East dying without Jesus, you know, Muslims and, and Jewish people that are dying without Jesus because they believe in the, you know, the religion that does not have any salvation in it at all. And the only salvation that we truly know is your faith through Jesus Christ. We know that that saves us. But, you know, my heart's going out for all the people that are dying in this world. But, you know, we just have to constantly pray for people to turn away and to really accept the truth and say, look, man, you know, we can see all these things about different religions and different philosophies and theologies and things like that. But what is the truth? The truth is that Jesus Christ came on this earth um, and died from us. God came and reconciled the earth through his son. And he died for each and every one of us that we may not see death because he does not wish death. He does not wish that the wicked will perish. He wishes that they want to repent. But if you do live in, in wickedness and you re reject the, the love and the grace through Jesus Christ, if you reject that beautiful gift that he's given us, then ultimately you know that you're already going to be condemned. And eventually when you were raised for the second judgment, for the judgment, you are going to be in, so get sent to the lake of fire. You know, the Jesus Christ, I mean, the most high Yah is not in, he's not wicked. He's righteous and he's sovereign and he's just, and he gives us what we deserve. You know, he could have not even gave us if he didn't love us, he would have never came through Jesus Christ to reconcile us. So think about that. You see why we're living so long now, so many, the earth could have been destroyed a long time ago. But as you can see now, we're still giving grace. He's showing us by all the different things that's happening in the world that the time is running short. He's giving us hints. He's displaying and he's showing us all over around us. No one can say that God had not warned us. Nobody can say that he didn't send prophets. He didn't send messages to warn us. We all can see what's going on in the world. There's no one that's going to be shocked. If they enter into the lake of fire, nobody's going to walk blindly going into the lake of fire. We all have a choice and he's all given us an understanding of reason and a conscience to understand who he is above all the animals and all the beasts of the earth. He's given us reason, us humans. He's given us a special quality to have a relationship with him and to cry out with him. No matter what we're going through, we can always reach out to him. So I love you guys. I'm headed out now. Grace and peace to you all in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love you. You stay strong. Endure to the end. Brothers, peace. Shalom. Happy Shabbat. And you have a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful weekend, brothers. I love you guys. Grace and peace.